Hey there everyone, welcome to another lesson on the Microsoft AEZ 800 course. Today's topic is scaling virtual machines on Azure. Now let's first take a look at the different types of scaling you get and what scaling actually is in general. Since some of you folks watching this might not actually know what scaling is yet. Okay, so with scaling, you get two kinds. And these two I'm about to mention to you is not just limited to the Azure portal. This is now in general for all virtual machines, whether they are on Azure, whether they're on premises, and this actually extends even to physical machines, believe it or not. So what are the different types of scaling you get? Well, you get scale up or scaling up, as some might say. This is also known as vertical scaling. And then you also get scale out or scaling out, as some might say. This one is also known as horizontal scaling. So now that you know what the different types of scaling you get are and what their names are, you're probably still wondering what the heck this is in general, right? <laughs> okay, so let's explain. Imagine you have yourself one virtual machine on the Azure portal. Hmm, you know what? To help you visualize this, I'll add a picture here at the bottom right for you. There you go. That should help. Okay, so that is your virtual machine on the Microsoft Azure portal. Now that virtual machine of yours obviously has certain specs. What exactly the specs are doesn't matter. But let's imagine for a moment this machine has 2 gigs of RAM for argument's sake. If I were to do the first type of scaling we mentioned earlier, which was scaling up, that is when you take a machine and you simply just upgrade it. I kid you not. You could say you're beefing it up. You're improving on it in some sort of way. This could be by giving it more RAM. It could be to upgrade the CPU or to maybe give it more CPUs. Yes, you can actually do that. You could be giving it more storage space, perhaps. The point is, when you take a machine, whether it be physical or virtual, and you upgrade it or beef it up with more resources, that is basically scaling up. Now, looking at the picture we have at the bottom right once more, if I were to take that machine and upgrade it with more RAM, let's say upgraded to 4 gigs of RAM instead of 2 gigs. That would be an example of scaling up. Obviously, you're not just limited to RAM. I'm simply just using RAM as an example here. So scaling up is when you stay on the same machine, whether physical or virtual, and you simply just upgrading that machine with more resources. I think that pretty much summarizes what scaling up is, folks. Now, with regards to the second type of scaling we had on our list, which is scaling out, that is when you take your machine and you basically make duplicates of it. Instead of upgrading your existing machine or machines, since it might be more than one, you instead are now dropping duplicate machines alongside your existing machine or machines. Okay, so looking at the picture we originally had earlier, here we have our one machine with two gigs of RAM. Now let's drop a duplicate alongside it with the same specs. Now instead of me just having one machine of two gigs of RAM, I now have two machines with two gigs of RAM each. You might say I just doubled my resources since I literally have two more times of everything in this example of mine. Okay, so to recap, the first type of scaling is scaling up or vertical scaling. That is just to take your existing machine and just to add more resources on it. Basically just to upgrade your existing machines. The second type of scaling was scaling out or horizontal scaling. That is to drop more machines alongside your existing ones you currently have. More duplicate machines, that is. Alrighty, folks, let's have a bit of a look at scaling machines on the Azure portal compared to scaling them on premises. Basically, what is the difference between the two and what are the pros and the drawbacks? Okay, so 
First of all, scaling your machines in the cloud on Azure is much, much faster than doing it on-premises with your virtual machines or physical machines. In the cloud on Microsoft Azure, you scale a machine up or out in a matter of seconds or minutes in most cases. If you ever tried scaling a machine up or out on premises, you would probably know that this is usually going to take a lot longer on premises, whether it be physical or virtual. On premises, if you have a virtual machine, depending on what you want to upgrade on that machine, you're most likely going to have to turn that machine off, which means guess what? Downtime. Downtime is a bad thing. If a virtual machine is offline, whatever service it was rendering could also now be offline. That most likely will result in some sort of financial loss for the company, for your company, your client's company, whoever this virtual machine belongs to. So what's going to happen now is you're most likely not going to be able to turn that machine off, at least not right away, that is. You're going to have to arrange for some planned downtime or at the very least, wait until after hours or wait until the weekend. This means you could, you could possibly end up waiting for hours, maybe even days before you could turn that machine off so you can just go and do something as simple as upgrading it. Now, if this was in the cloud, it would only have taken you a mere few seconds or a mere few minutes before this would all be done. So you see the difference here? Huge benefit to putting in the cloud. Something else to keep in mind with upgrading machines on premises, if you want to upgrade your virtual machines on premises, do you actually have any spare resources on a host to give to the virtual machine? You might find there is no additional resources to spare, so you might not have anything extra to give to that virtual machine. Another possible situation you could find yourself in is if this is a physical machine on premises, not a virtual machine. Now, physical machines on premises, if you want to go and upgrade them, obviously you also need to, you know, arrange for downtime and all that. But now there's the matter of physical hardware, physical RAM chips and hard drives and stuff like that. Do you have any spare hardware lying around? You might, you might not. And if you do not, which is most likely going to be the case, you're going to have to go and order these first. And these are not as simple as walking into your local computer store. You normally have to buy them online or from some sort of distributor. And if you are going to go and buy them online or from some sort of distributor, it's normally going to take a few business days before they get to you. So it's just delays and delays and delays, more and more of delays. So you can very clearly see there's a pattern here. Would it be physical? Would it be virtual? If it's on premises and you want to go and scale up a machine, it's obviously a lot quicker and a lot easier to go and do it in the cloud. Now, of scaling your machine out, which means adding duplicate machines, it's pretty much the same story, folks. Scaling out on Azure is insanely easy and quick compared to on-premises. If you, for example, have to make more duplicate virtual machines on-premises, you might not have the resources to do so. But if you, for example, need to go and, let's say, do more physical machines on-premises, it's going to cost you a small fortune and you'll have to order them once again, which could potentially take days, if not even weeks. Now, when you get them, these physical servers, you might possibly still have to assemble them. There's a very good chance of that. You might possibly still need to go and install server, install and configure a whole lot of other things. And all of this adds up. I wouldn't say it's rocket science. It's not going to kill you. It's just going to consume a tremendous amount of time. And time is money. All of this is going to take a very long time, especially if you were to go and compare it to the cloud. So all in all, putting stuff in the cloud, whether you're scaling up or scaling out, is going to be better in the cloud. Okay, so let's look at another point. Machines in the cloud on Microsoft Azure are generally a lot cheaper versus having them on-premises. On-premises, you would need a physical server room to host your physical service or your virtual service. This is also often the case if you have virtual machines on premises. Remember, those virtual machines on premises still need to be stored on a physical host. Where is that host of yours? It's probably on premises in a physical server room. See where we're going with this. The physical service or server hosts, as well as the physical server room, is going to cost you an arm and a leg. The costs don't stop there though. 
where normally are air cons in the server room, usually more than one, usually running on minimum temperature day and night. These cost money. The electricity they consume cost money. The electricity your servers consume cost money. And trust me, those servers are very, very power hungry. Those machines eat electricity like you wouldn't believe. The lists of costs you're going to have on premises just keeps adding up and it gets insane. So all in all, moving stuff in the cloud is going to be cheaper. Almost all of these costs are either going to fall away completely or be very, very drastically reduced when you move it into cloud. So I kind of sound like I'm selling the cloud here. In case anyone's wondering, no, I'm not getting paid to say this. No, I'm not sponsored in that sense. No, I'm simply stating facts. So if something does suck, trust me, I'll tell you it sucks. So in this case, strangely enough, this really is better for the most part to put stuff in the cloud. So in the cloud, you always have the latest of the latest and the best of the best, which is also going to save you costs in the future, since you will no longer need to spend money on upgrades. And remember, if you've got servers on premises, those servers, normally after three or five years, the average company needs to go and physically upgrade them. So you're going to have to physically replace them. And even the software, the actual operating systems themselves and the software is on those operating systems, that also needs to be upgraded. If your stuff is in the cloud, you always have the latest of the latest and the best of the best. So you don't have to go and spend money on upgrades since you're always going to have the latest. So it truly is cheaper to have your stuff in the cloud. Okay, folks, and then looking at our third point here, only pay for what you use. So that's going to also save you a tremendous amount of money in the cloud. So in the cloud, you only pay for what you use. If you don't use something, you don't pay for it. So if I were to go and scale my machine up in the cloud, yes, I'm going to be using more resources, which means I'm going to be paying more. But if I find myself in a situation where I don't need all of that resources, guess what? You're only going to be paying for what you use. And I like the fact that in the cloud, you can actually scale back down, which means you're going to be paying less. You can also scale back down. So that brings me to that point. I actually just mentioned that you can scale back down or back in on Azure. So as you know, scaling up is obviously upgrading a server. Scaling out is dropping more servers. Now, usually on premises, if you upgraded a virtual machine or especially a physical machine, you're kind of stuck with those upgrades. In the cloud, you can downgrade a server. Now on premises as well, if you were to go and drop more servers, especially physical servers, you're also generally stuck with that. In the cloud, nope. If you don't need them, you can scale back in if needed. Now one might say, okay, but why would you want to go and scale back down or back in? Because it kind of sounds like you're going backwards. Well, remember that goes back to the third point where we said you only pay for what you use. So if I originally had two virtual machines and I scaled out and I now have three virtual machines, yes, I'm going to be paying more. But what if we reach a certain point in time where traffic goes down or demand goes down to where I only need two virtual machines again? I don't need three. Now, wouldn't it be nice if I can scale back in? And yes, you can. And when you do that, you only pay for those two virtual machines where you could have possibly have been paying for free virtual machines, which means you're saving a tremendous amount of money. Where on premises, if you had free servers, you'd be stuck with those free servers. Even if you technically just need two of them, you're stuck with all three of them. They're going to be running day and night. So your electricity is going to go through the roof. Your maintenance costs are going to go through the roof. There's just costs and costs and costs. So in a cloud, if you only pay for what you use, it's going to drastically save you a tremendous amount of money. I mean, another fun fact, which is not actually part of this course, you can have the whole scale up and up, out and out, okay, up and out and back down and back in process automated. So if you find that your machines need to go and scale up or something, Microsoft can automate the process for you. If they need to scale back down, Microsoft can automate the process for you. So I mean, how nice is that? we on premises. You would have to keep a hawk's eye on all of this so that your RAM doesn't run out, so that your servers doesn't crash for your argument's sake. In the cloud, well, it's in the cloud, which means it's someone else's problem. It is Microsoft's problem. So for once, we can point the finger to someone else and say it's someone else's problem. And then my last point I want to mention to you guys today is less downtime on Azure, if any. So we're specifically referring to scaling machines up and out. That's what I mean. I don't talk about the high availability right now. 
So if you had to go and scale a machine up or out on premises, you would most likely have to turn that machine off as we've established earlier. You're gonna have to probably arrange downtime, maintenance time, could possibly be down for a few minutes, but it's probably realistically going to be down for hours, if not days, that machine. Where in the cloud, if you scale a machine up or out, you do not need to turn it off. In most cases, there'll be little to no downtime at all. You might find your users are none the wiser. They might not even know you've gone and upgraded, you know, those servers, you know, scaling out or scaling up. And that's, that's ideally what you want. You don't want the user to know there was ever a problem in the first place. But if you're going to try to stunt on premises, <laughs> they will know because the stuff is going to be offline. Uh, now, when I say less downtime, yes, you obviously get other benefits in, in Azure as well, which, which could also be seen as less downtime because they do give you a 99.9% .9 uptime guarantee on pretty much everything. And depending on what high availability options you choose, you could potentially even get this up to like 99.95%. .9 not the topic for today, though. That's a topic for an entirely different day. I just thought I'd throw it in there, you know, since we were on a topic anyway. All right, guys. So I hope you guys have learned something. I hope you guys have a better idea now as to what scaling is, scaling out and scaling up. And if you feel like you've learned something, do me a favor and smash that like button. And if you'd like to be informed of when I upload new videos for this course or any other course, remember to hit that subscribe button down below as well. And as an extra, I just want to say thank you to my Patreon sponsors for this video. So special thank you to all the people that's been sponsoring this channel. At the moment, it's just one. I actually had one and then the guy dropped off and now I've got someone else I see. Either way, still very nice to have a few sponsors. If you guys would like to sponsor the channel as well, you're welcome to find that information in the video description down below. I've got a PayPal and I've got a Patreon. So if you guys want to do that, check it out in the video description down below. Alrighty guys, see you on the next video.